fixes your car in just minutes with no buffing. Build something to inspire all those who experience it. So I've always been a big fan of Porsche 911 GT3s. The GT3 really started on the 996 GT3 where it was a water-cooled car. The 993 Porsche 911 is the last of the air-cooled cars. There was always a missing lineage in the history of the Porsche 911. We always felt that it was a pity that there wasn't a 993 GT3 or GT3 RS that was ever built by Porsche. The voice that knows you better than any other. The voice that knows what makes you. My name is uh, Peter Nam, and I'm the president and CEO of Borsteiner and Guntherworks. So, Guntherworks really was formed around the concept of us building the ultimate 911. My name is Amjad Ali. I am the sales and technical director for Guntherworks. I uh, ended up meeting uh, Peter because I became a distributor for uh, Vorsteiner out in Dubai. And then Peter came over to see me there and um, we sort of clicked. And then we've been close friends for the last 10 years. And then last year I sold my business and was moving back to the UK when uh, Peter had some very, very sort of uh, stringent and pretty strict directives on where he wanted to be with the car. Prototype or the first build that we've done on this car that you see is really uh, all production parts on the car. In the case of the 400R we're building 25 cars. Now my experience going back is uh, I used to run 964s and 993s 25 odd years ago when the cars were current. So I knew a lot about them, I've raced them as well, I've done a lot of track driving and I've raced these cars. So what I did was, um, when we sat down and worked on the project, one of the things we wanted to do was make sure that the car uh, handled and uh, drove the way we feel it needed, to be it needed to drive. Now these cars are 25 years old, and in 25 years ago, they were pretty much uh, state of the art. But technology waits for no man, and technology has progressed so much in the last 25 years. To some. You know, Vorsteiner design philosophy is really based upon the fact that we want something to look like it came right out of a factory. We don't want it to look aftermarket. Vorsteiner really started with uh, myself and uh, my wife and our first employee was actually someone that had delivered oranges to us in a shopping cart. And we had decided to work with him and train him on composite manufacturing. And six months later, the, he was a very, very talented uh, carbon fiber laminator. And that's really where the staff grew from there. To some, the monument was a fender. Design is really a byproduct of the functionality and performance of the vehicle. It wasn't just a case of we make a beautiful looking car and then we put some wheels in it and we put spacers to fill the arches out. No, it was done the opposite way. It was designed from the outset to do that. And from there, we designed the fenders and the body around a completely square track. From the technical side of things, I had to build a team um, that could work on this car from a mechanical perspective. So we reached out to Jeff Gamroth up at Rossport and Jeff's been a fundamental part of our development of this car. So when we reached out to Jeff, we then looked for other people to work with and so Jeff came to us and he spoke to us about uh, Joey Seeley over at Emotion Engineering. To some, it was a suspension system. The idea is if you come to a speed bump or if you're in a steep drive and you need to lift the car like any modern supercar, you can just hit the button and the front of the car will lift a, a couple of inches and it gives you that extra ground clearance. I 
I was brought in um, by Gunther Works for that exact reason, um, to, to focus on the mechanicals of the car and um, specifically the suspension dynamics um, to make their 430 horsepower stick. My first impression of the 400R was, um, you know, obviously it was very attractive and I loved seeing the, the photos of the process. It was a good looking car, you know, but that only gets you so far, you know, which was kind of neat when they um, approached me because they really, really wanted it to perform, not just look a certain way, you know, and I, it has to be that way for a build for me is to, to have confidence that they're not going to cut corners and um, they don't lose vision you know, gave me confidence to, to get on board because it was going to be right no matter what. Um, I specialize here in high performance Porsche builds, whether it be for a street or track and everything in between. My background with Porsche uh, goes back uh, 17 years racing professionally as a crew, crew guy and mechanic. Actually won Sebring, um, won Petit Le Mans twice. And what we ended up with is we ended up with a car that has a 63 inch track, both front and rear. So the car is now completely square. And then we started blueprinting uh, the, the new body parts. And uh, once we had the plastic parts machined out, we would put them on the car and we would have our clay modelers come and refine that further. Peter originally contacted me to be part of the 400R project to make the lenses for his new bespoke headlights. One of the things that we do at my company is we manufacture prototype automotive glass of all types, including uh, laminated windshields and, uh, and all kinds of uh, backlights and side glass and so forth. And he reached out to me to actually manufacture a real glass lens for a new bespoke headlight assembly for the car. Peter and I had a conversation about what we could do to update the headlights on the 993. And so he wanted something that would continue to drive the visual appeal of the vehicle forward and also update the capability of the headlight at the same time. It must be a bi-LED headlight, that is a high beam and low beam LED. It needed to have an LED daytime running light incorporated into the assembly as well. It needed to adapt to the existing headlight mechanism. This needed to really be a plug and play kind of solution. Uh, didn't want to be some uh, specialized boutique thing. Obviously he's going to be uh, going into production on these automobiles. And then I went to work. This, this back piece is all the scanned uh, original headlight housing and so we have the the three main elements of the headlight are the uh, this projector bezel an off-the-shelf by LED projector I ended up making a, a, a hard aluminum tool to be able to manufacture composite shroud and invited Peter over to come see the components and he saw the the aluminum hard tool and within five seconds he decided that he wanted to make the, the part out of carbon fiber and of course, that's one of his specialties. That's uh, very much in, in his manufacturing wheelhouse. And so he took, quickly took the molds and went to his facility and came back the very next day with carbon fiber. And so I had an idea about what it was gonna be, but like every glass project, it's 50% art and 50% engineering. Ultimately, there's a, a lot to know about the, the material in terms of the way it forms and what it takes in terms of temperature and force and gravity and time. Uh, but there's always a bit of an artistic touch required as well, and every single project is a learning experience. In order to be able to withstand rocks and other kinds of projectiles that, that the headlight would encounter being low to the ground. Challenging set of, of initial conditions to be able to get the shape that we really wanted. And what we wanted was something that was very close to the factory shape. And we're able to achieve, again, the, the shape that we wanted after quite a number of, of trials and then we went into the, the next step which is to uh, trim and polish the lens. Uh, the right kind of trim line for the headlight that would register back to the factory bucket uh, but also have a nice finished edge on it that was similar to the original cast glass lens. 
we also wanted to modernize the headlight because you know headlight technology has come a long way since 1995. It actually plugs right into the factory plugs. And what you're saying is that that amber light is always on when the Perfect. Turn signal. Again. There you go. Dude. What panel does he want to make on He just wants to do a panel that sits right here in the black DBS with the switch in it. To some, it was a cockpit. made sure that uh, the wheel arches right where the edge of the fender is follows the same curvature and radius of the factory and that's one of the first things that the Porsche purist guys catch right away. To some it was a 270 horsepower engine. They were hoping to make 400 horsepower out of the 4 liter uh, but they made 430 horsepower out of the 4 liter. So I think to underestimate what the number is good, 400R sounds better than 430R. <laughs> Taking the original engine, the only part of the original engine we keep is a crankcase. Every other component on that engine is completely modified. So we have billet uh, barrels, we have uh, custom camshafts, we have uh, pistons that are made specifically in, in our specification for Rossport. There's some interesting parts on that engine as well. So for instance, the plenum makes a big part. It's now become a feature in the back of the car. So whenever you lift the rear hood of the car and you see this carbon plenum with this air filter, you now we get comments like it looks like a Bang & Olufsen speaker. But it's not there to look pretty. It's actually there to do a job and it's very, very functional. It's very, very effective. But it also incorporates the resonance flap that's uh, opened and closed by the ECU and the engine. And that uses harmonics then to generate extra pulsing effect and generates more power. And in fact, it probably generates around about 40 horsepower. Now on a 993, if you look, stand at the front of the car, the oil cooler is like this. It's at 90 degrees and you're looking at it head on. So air has to come in and it has to go through 90 degrees to go through this oil cooler and now. Part of the redesign when we did the front fenders was we had so much, we made so much more room at the front of the car. Air is channeled directly straight through both of those oil coolers and makes the cooling, oil cooling, way more efficient than the factory car and even more efficient than the race cars. Getting rid of the air conditioning and putting in a cooler. But have to map it out, plumb it, and all that stuff first. The interesting fact about it is, whenever you build an engine and you dyno the engine, the dynograph always goes up and then it roll, what's called rolls over where you hit peak power. This engine hasn't rolled over yet. However, because this is a production engine and we're building production cars, we've capped the, uh, uh, the rev limit at 7,800 RPM. So the car pulls right up to its red line. So when you're driving this car, it pulls hard and it just keeps going. You change gear, it keeps going and it keeps going. So you, you rev it right to 7,800 RPM and the car flies.
the best part of it is you're driving an analog car in a digital world. They're made to be driven. So you get an air-cooled car and you drive it by the scruff of its neck and it performs brilliantly. We have unveiled a car again at SEMA, at the Meguiar's booth, thanks to our partnership with them for many years. And we actually made uh, top 12 uh, the Battle of the Builders this year, so which was a great honor. We were very worried about how the Porsche community would react, the purist community, and uh, uh, fortunately, they all love the vehicle because it looks, the design language and the execution of it looks like something that came directly out of the factory.